James Duvall, and it's all foggy, and all the um, uh, the cast names are going across the screen in their, every direction, and um, he's like masturbating in the shower. So that's how the movie starts. That's what we're in for here. Um, you know, so it's rated R. It's uh, so this is not for kids. I do put these these videos as eighteen plus, even though I'm sure there are some teenagers who can handle it, but. <laughs> In fact, I saw this movie when I was like 15, but anyway, I just, but it's graphics, so I'm warning you now. Um, this director also did The Doom Generation with James Duvall and Rose McGowan, so um, if you're familiar with that one, which did have a DVD release and came out in 95, I believe, then you know like what we're dealing with here. So, okay, James Duvall masturbating in the shower, and then he gets interrupted, uh, <laughs> from his fantasy, which is, like, full of weird, like, bisexual stuff happening, like, well, it's not weird because it's bisexual, but it's weird because, like, at first he's fantasizing about these two kind of, like, dominatrix women, uh, Chris and Cozy, who are, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, trying to humiliate him, and then later he's, like, in the locker room with this guy, and they're just having, like, this romantic conversation, so it's kind of funny because they're going back and forth between, like, kink and, like, romance. Um, anyway, he gets interrupted by his mom while he's masturbating in the shower, and his mom is Bev played by, uh, Beverly D'Angelo, who, you know, was from the Vacation movies, and, uh, she played the mom, and she's got, like, kind of a, a green, like, avocado face mask on or something. She's basically telling him, you know, like, get out of the shower, I know what you're doing in there, and she says something like, uh, if you up your handle too much, young man, it's gonna wither up and fall off. So then he runs to his room and he's like, shut up. And like his room is really cool because like the entire like back wall, like it's like a, a mural of James Duvall with a gun to his head. And that's like his like huge like bedroom wall. Um this movie is like sorry if you hear that outside. Someone's fucking loud ass car. Please go. Sorry about your dick. Okay. Um Anyway, yeah, so he, like, he's in his bedroom, and, uh, oh, yeah, I was gonna say, he, uh, the production design in this movie is, like, totally insane. It's, like, um, it's just super, like, colorful, like, late 90s, psychedelic, like, think of, like, what the original, like, <laughs> like, IMAX looked like when they lo had, like, colors on them. It's very much, like, those kind of, like, late 90s popular colors, um, <clears throat> and so, uh, he steps on like a rotten sandwich and then puts in like a, a videotape and he's kind of like a film student kind of guy. So he's like um, watching a tape of his girlfriend who's played by Rachel True, which many people know her from The Craft. Um, and uh, uh, what's that? Half-Baked. Half-Baked was another big one she was in. Um, yeah, so she's also in like a, a Lifetime movie called uh, Mother. <laughs> which I love. I actually, I have to do that one soon because it's like my all-time favorite Lifetime movie. It has Daryl Hannah in it, but we'll get to that another time. Um, okay, so yeah, she's like basically like on 
the TV. He's watching uh, the video of, of himself taping her. And I don't know, she says something like, I don't know, they're just flirting around. And she starts to like kind of take her top off like she's going to show her boobs. And then um, he gets interrupted by like a phone call. And he's like, city morgue, you stab him, we slab him. And then uh, on the other line is his girlfriend. And she's like in this crazy like psychedelic bathroom where like her um, overalls have polka dots on them. And she's standing against a wall with like colorful polka dots. And like the wall and her overalls like actually match. Like she's blending into the wall. She's like talking on the phone in the bathroom. And then we see um, uh, her girlfriend who played... I can't remember what her name was, but she was in um, 902 now. And I think her name's like Kathleen, Kathleen Robertson. I may have, it's Kathleen something, her real name. But um, anyway, she plays like, James Duvall has a girlfriend and his girlfriend has a girlfriend. <laughs> the girl, and so this, the Rachel True's girlfriend is uh, from 90210. And uh, they don't get along. And, uh, they're basically, like, having a conversation on the phone while they're passing each other, like, maxi pads and stuff. And then her brother comes in and takes a leak in front of them, and they're talking about going to this party. There's, like, some guy, um, that's my dog. There's, like, some guy, uh, named Juji Fruit who's throwing a party, and that's kind of, like, what this movie is centered around or culminating to, because it's literally set, like, in one day in Los Angeles. It's just, like, a, a like, a 24-hour period. So, anyway, um... They're, uh, he gets a ride from his girlfriend later and they're going to go, uh, grab like breakfast at some restaurant or whatever. And they're there and, um, well, they're on their way there and they're like in this cool classic convertible. I don't know cars that well, but it's like this really cool kind of like, um, I don't know, like retro blue convertible. And, um, it's, it's dark, James DeVall, um, Mel. Rachel True, his girlfriend, and then Lucifer, which is Kathleen Robertson. And then they stop and then they see um, Nathan Bexton standing on the side of the road next to a, like a bus stop bench that just says, God help me. And um, so like, they, he's like, wait, Dark's like, wait, back up, Mel. So Mel, who's driving, like backs up and they're like, hey, you want to like uh, grab breakfast with us? And he's like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to be late for, like, my thermonuclear catastrophes class or something. And so uh, they're like, no, look, we'll drop you off. It'll be real quick. Don't worry. So he hops in. And then they basically lose for and Dark kind of have a back and forth because they don't like each other. And so, like, uh, I think um, Lucifer, like, starts, like, doing that, like, that, that armpit thing where it makes your arm fart. And, and she's like, hey, Mel, what's this? And then, like... Uh, and Mel's like, what? And then Lucifer's like, dark being born. <laughs> and then uh, she says something, the, the conversation like transitions into like, uh, I hate when I get like a pimple on my, like on a spot on my back in a place where I can't even reach down to pop it. <laughs> That's what Lucifer says. And then Dark's like, Lucifer, you are so dumb. You should donate your brain to a monkey science fair. <laughs> so anyway, they go to this restaurant and like they order like Fruit Loops, they're like eating cereal in a restaurant. And um, um, I think there's like some song by the Future Sounds of London playing in the background. Uh, it's a really good soundtrack, by the way. You can probably still find it in some record stores. It's it's good. Um, it's got like Daft Punk and Chemical Brothers and like all kinds of stuff on there. All the '90s like electronic greats. And there's also like some um, some good like rock music too, uh, like the London Suede aka suede um anyway so yeah like guillermo diaz shows up and he plays a guy named cowboy guillermo diaz you might know from uh i believe scandal and um weeds and um, a whole bunch of other things but anyway he uh he shows up and he's a little back in 1997 he's just this tiny little twink boy and like it's just crazy like because he's so young in it but anyway um Sorry, I need to adjust this here. Okay. And so anyway, like, uh, he shows up and Dark and Cowboy kind of have, like, a heart-to-heart -heart about how, like, Cowboy's boyfriend is, like, strung out on heroin or something. And, like, he's like, I don't know how we're going to continue being in a band together with my boyfriend all strung out. 
And so, uh, uh, Dark's like, yeah, that sucks, you know? And then they move into, like, some conversation where it's like, uh, did you hear uh, about so-and-so? His butthole fell out. And then Dark is just like, oh, Henry. And so, uh, it's just, like, a really silly movie in that regard. And, um, uh, I think Nathan Bexon's, like, on his way out and he runs into, uh, oh, gosh, what's her name? Something Lad. J Lad. Jordan Lad. He runs into Jordan Lad and her like boobs are like packed and tight in this like corset that she's wearing and she's got this really cool like red hair and stuff. And then like um she's like, Oh, aren't you in my class? And he's like, Yeah and uh they're start and she's like, uh, have you heard about Armageddon? Or no, she Okay, so um Jordan Lad asks Nathan Bexton, she's like, Have you heard of the Rapture? And he's like the Susie and the Banshees album? She's like, no, Dodo Bird or Dodo Brain or something. She's like, the end of the world. Like, all the nuclear chemical power plants are going to explode and there will be nothing left of us. And today is that day. <laughs> so she's like some doomsday prophet, even though she just like, you know, some hipster girl who's just like, came out of nowhere. Meanwhile, at the restaurant, um, there's three girls sitting at a table um, and they have like a big slices of like chocolate cake or something in front of them and um oh i can't remember who two of the girls are but one of them is uh played by christina applegate <laughs> and she looks so dorky in this movie like they did a good job of making her like look like an ugly teenager because she like she was kind of still coming off of you know being like this was 97, so she was just coming out of, like, her phase of being Kelly Bundy on Married with Children and being, like, the hot girl, you know? And so, like, she went from that to this movie where she's got, like, kind of, like, this dorky, like, short brunette haircut and, like, braces and, like, minimal makeup with, like, pimples and stuff like that. So she just looks like she belongs in the seventh grade. I think she's even wearing, like, a teddy bear, like, t-shirt or something like that. <laughs> like a teddy bear baby tee. And, um... I don't know if you can hear it or not. I'm just getting some water. <laughs> and uh, so, okay, what else happens? Um, oh, yeah, so these three girls are, um, like, are uh, not anorexic, but the other one, bulimic. Trigger warning, these girls are bulimic, and um, they're all kind of, like, eyeing this chocolate cake, and they're like, all right, ladies, scarf. And so they all just start, like, binge eating this chocolate cake and, like, just shoving it in their mouths, and it's really gross. The music's cool. And um, then after they're done, they're like, <laughs> plug. And uh, then they're kind of asking each other, like, uh, are you going to throw it up? Well, you know, I think, um, Chris yeah, Christina Applegate's like, are you going to? And the, one of the girls is like, um, no, I'm just going to do a bunch of speed and not eat for like three days. You know, I promised my mom I wouldn't <laughs> throw up. <laughs> and then the other girl who's there, who's wearing this like really crazy, like, outfit it's like a little like um mini dress with like it looks like lots of gum stuck on it like i don't know if you've ever been to seattle but that wall that just has like gum all over it her dress looks like that and she runs to the bathroom and and uh proceeds to vomit because she's still doing the bulimia thing and um not like her friend who's doing speed for three days and not eating because <laughs> she promised her mom <laughs> so uh Anyway, so she, like, uh, gets walked in on by um, this, like, 90s hot guy. He's not really that hot, but, like, in the 90s, he would be considered hot, I guess. But he was on Baywatch. And uh, anyway, like, she runs back to her friends or whatever, and she's like, this guy just asked me out on a date, like, uh, you know, and they're like, oh, my God, like, he's on Baywatch, you know. So that happens. And then um, cut to... The, the bulimic girl with the gum dress. Uh, her name is Egg. I can't remember who plays her, though. But her name is Egg. And um, she's, like, walking on a bridge, like, having, like, a romantic talk with um, the Baywatch star, who he really was in Baywatch in real life, and in the movie he's also a Baywatch star. <laughs> so um, I don't know how much of a stretch it was for him to play this role, but anyway, like, he's like, yeah, like, you know, just talking her up and, like, kind of, like 
being like, you're so different, you're so beautiful, and, you know, all the things that people want to hear about themselves, but it's just, like, a guy's way of being like, I want to do you. Um, okay, so now i got to rack my brain. What happens after that? I feel like this is, yeah, I didn't take notes. So let me, um, let's take a moment here. To... Okay. So what happens next? I believe uh, we are at the boyfriend of Cowboy's house, and he is um, a drug dealer, and uh, he's kind of like, or no, 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 we're at the drug dealer's house. This drug dealer deals to Cowboy's boyfriend, and um, the drug dealer is, um, I don't know what his... Oh, his name is Handjob. The drug dealer's name is Handjob. Cowboy busts into Handjob's apartment while Handjob's, like, cutting up lines or something and, like, uh, or, like, weighing drugs on, like, a scale. And he, like, basically, like, kind of throws him up against the wall and is like, stop selling drugs to my boyfriend. Like, you know, like, he's, he, just stop it. And so kind of threatens him. And the other guy, like, is, like, falls over and is just like, what? <laughs> and he's, like, out of it. And so um, we see, like, Cowboy, like, uh, going over to, later on, he's on top of, like, this, like, building in downtown L.A., and uh, he uh, kind of has, like, a heart-to-heart -heart with his boyfriend, who's, like, totally strung out, just, like, laying on the side and on the roof of a building, and, like, uh, it's like, we can't do this anymore, you know, like, we're gonna lose everything, each other, our band, everything, and the other guy's like, I'm really sorry, but, like, I don't know how sorry he really is, because, like... <laughs> Like, in another scene, he is, like, seen um, with Chris and Cozy, which were in the beginning in James Duvall's fantasy. This, so the boyfriend of Cowboy now is, uh, I can't remember, I can't remember his name. I'm going to say maybe Jeremy Jordan, but I could be getting him confused with somebody else. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so the scene with Chris and Cozy, which is happening for real in the movie, not like a masturbation fantasy. Uh, he's got like nipple piercings and like one of them takes a wrench and like rips it out. It's like, luckily they don't show it, but every time to this day, I'm just like, Ugh. like it just, it's, you hear it. It's like, Oh God. Ooh. So yeah. Anyway, like this guy, I mean, I guess when you're that strong out on heroin, you don't really, you can't tell when someone's like, <laughs> ripping a, a nipple ring out of your nipple and, you know, tearing it apart, but so whatever that happens. And, um, so then we have, um, Mel, Rachel True, her younger brother, uh, whose name is Zero. He is, like, really desperate to go to Juju Fruit's party, and we've, and he goes to pick up his girlfriend, who's played by Mina Savari, pre-American beauty, and, um, his girlfriend, uh, so is like, she wants to go too, and so he like picks her up. He's like, let's go to this party together, and blah blah blah. Um, meanwhile, uh, we see some other stuff go down. Like, uh, and I'm probably getting out of order here. Some of the scenes are kind of like just random, but that's what makes this movie so good. So, uh, uh, so okay, so like. Christina Applegate's, like, walking with, her, with um, I think, Jordan Ladd later. Um, God, what's, what is her name in the movie? I can't remember, but anyway. Um, and she's like, what are you going to wear at Gigi Fruit's party tonight? And Christina Applegate's like, clothes. And then, like, um, Jordan Ladd's, like, boyfriend pulls up on a motorcycle. And he's, like, this, like, like really buff, hot dude. And, like, in, like, you know, the, in his leathers on a motorcycle and he's like get on and she's like you stink and he's like are you complaining and she's like nope and so they drive off and go and have sex at his apartment and like the sex is really weird because she has a twin brother played by ryan felipe or philippe i can't i don't remember how i pronounce ryan philippe he and he is dating heather graham so i told you it's star-studded <laughs> there's a lot of people in this movie so ryan philippe and heather graham are like um, an item, and then there's his sister Jordan Ladd and this motorcycle guy whose names I can't really remember in the movie, but so like, um, 
anyway, there's like this like long like sex scene where like Nine Inch Nails plays their cover, or is it a cover? Memorabilia? Yeah, they play their cover Memorabilia because I think that was originally by Soft Cell in the 80s, right? I don't know. So anyway, um, I'm probably like talking about things that most people are like, what? <laughs> Some of you know. And uh, yeah, so anyway, like it kind of like cuts back and forth between like Ryan Phillippe and Heather Graham, like having sex and and then Jordan Ladd and her motorcycle boyfriend having sex and like one of them's like mommy and the other one's like daddy and it's like mommy daddy mommy daddy ah, the way it's like edited <laughs> and so all that goes down uh it's really strange and then um trying to think what happens after that there's like uh we're getting closer to like party time now I feel like and they're all talking about how, like, they want to play, um, they have been, like, mentioning about the movie, like, are you going to the Kick the Can game tonight? Which is, like, I don't know if you ever played Kick the Can, but it's basically, like, where everyone kind of plays hide and seek, and then while the, the seeker is looking for the hiders, the hiders try to, like, stealthily move around the seeker so they can run, run to the can and kick it, and then you are, you know, you're no longer, like, um, gonna get, like, tagged or it or whatever, you know, so... And they all take ecstasy before they do this, too. So they're, like, playing this, like, game. It's, like, evening is set. Um, uh, Dark and Mel have been having some problems in their relationship earlier, like, after they had sex. Like, they were, he was like, let's just stay in tonight. Like, I don't want to go out. And she's like, no, like, I promise I'd pick up, you know, Lucifer or something like that. And so... Anyway, they go to play kick the can, they take a bunch of ecstasy, and then they're all hiding, and it's like in this baseball field that they're doing. It's like nobody's there except for this group of friends. And um, <clears throat> so they're in the baseball field, and uh, Nathan Bexton is like alone by himself, like walking around in the locker room, which I believe was the same locker room from Dark's Fantasy in the beginning. And he's walking around this locker room, and there's like this weird green lighting everywhere. And he's, like, super, like, paranoid, um, probably from, like, the E or something. You know, believe it or not, like, uh, you can get paranoid on E. A lot of people don't know that. Not that I would know or anything. <laughs> I don't do that shit anymore, but, you know, I had a time in my day. And so uh, he runs into Cowboy and, like, has kind of a jump scare. And uh, Cowboy's like, oh, like, you know, like, don't, you know, piss your pampers or something like that. And so, like, they they separate, and um, meanwhile, uh, Christina Applegate's, like, hiding under the bleachers with uh, Scott Kahn, James Kahn's son, and, or is it Can? It's C-A-A-N. I always thought it was pronounced Kahn, but I don't know how you pronounce her last name. Um, and uh, she's got a crush on Scott Kahn, and, like, she tries to kiss him, like, randomly, like, while they're having, like, a dumb conversation. And uh, he, she, like, nicks his tooth with her braces, and it's, like, the most awkward, like, kiss ever. And he's like, why did you do that? Like, you hurt my tooth. And then she's so embarrassed, she just grabs his hand, and they run and kick the can. And so, like, back in the locker room, um, Nathan Bexton's walking around, and suddenly he sees, like, this giant, like, green alien. And this alien has, like, a, like, a, um, I don't know, like, some kind of, like, space machine gun type thing or whatever. <laughs> like a ray gun i guess and so like this, it's like a guy in like a costume who looks like a like a reptile lizard alien type thing um you just hear like him like shoot nathan bexton and nathan's like ah! which i forgot to mention earlier in the movie there's a scene where it's like a, one of my favorite scenes but it has like nothing to do with anything um but there's a scene that's randomly kind of interspersed uh, toward the beginning of the movie where James Duvall's like walking somewhere like off Hollywood Boulevard. There's like a famous mural. I can't remember which street it's on. Like, uh, but it's like around like Hollywood and Cherokee, someone, something like that, if you're from the LA area. And, uh, and it has like, you know, like a mural of like all these stars sitting in like a movie theater and has like, you know, James Dean and Marilyn Monroe and like all the classics, you know, Charlie Chaplin and stuff. And, uh, anyway, James Ball's got his video camera, like, you know, the film student that he is, and he's, like, he's, like, filming stuff, and, um, he's standing next to a bus stop, and uh, sitting at this bus stop is, um, uh, Shannon Doherty, Tracy Lords, and, uh, Rose McGowan. 
So, and they all just kind of make a cameo in this movie. They played the Valley Girls, like Valley Girl number one, number two, number three. And they all have like just like really hairsprayed, like out hair and like these like crazy like hot pink outfits on and like retainers. And um, they totally talk like, you know, like Valley Girls and stuff, even more than I do. And so <laughs> um, they have this like really weird conversation, which reminds me a lot of. Uh, there's a, if you ever read the book Less Than Zero by Brad Easton Ellis, like, there's this very similar, where I think Gregor Rocky probably got, like, the inspiration for this. Uh, there's a similar part in, in Less Than Zero, the book, where, like, they're having a conversation at the Beverly Center, like, in the, um, I'm not called the cafeteria, what do you call the food court? Um, and they're having, like, this thing in the book just kind of, like, rumoring about people we've never even heard of and know nothing about. So, uh, anyway, the movie kind of takes after this this part that reminded me a lot of that. And uh, they're kind of like, um, you know, have you heard that, like, Eileen Schwarzkopf is, like, you know, fucking so-and-so? And they're like, I thought you were fucking so-and-so. And they're like, who? Like, Richard? Tomas? No! You know, and, like, they're just basically going back and forth, just having, like, a completely random conversation. You have to see it. I can't even explain it to you. It's just, like, a really stupid. But, uh, so, like, anyway, James Duvall sees, like, this green alien from earlier, or that we see later in the movie. Uh, he's, like, walking... The alien's, like, walking around across the street and then points a ray gun at the three valley girls and basically, like, obliterates all of them. And so the, all that's left on the on the bench where they were sitting are, like, three retainers and, like, steam coming off of them. It's brilliant. It's so bad it's good. Uh, and then, like, that's the end of the scene. Um, so anyway, going back to where we were. Um, the kick the can game. Uh... Yeah, so I think, like, there, there's, like, a part where, like, after the game, or before the game, where they're all, like, s spitting on, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, a painting of Newt Gingrich or something like that. Like, he's painted on the baseball, like, wall or something, and they're all just, like, trying to, like, hit, like, he's got, like, a target around him, kind of like a dartboard or a bullseye, and they're all, like, trying to spit to get, like, in the middle, like, around his face. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, so anyway, cut to um, uh, the little brother, Amina Savari. They're driving around, try and, like, they can't find, they don't know exactly where the party's at. They, they're they at a convenience store, and there's like, these three, like, buff, like, drag queens that come out, and they're, like, going to J.J. Bruce's party, so he's like, I'll follow them. So they're driving through, like, the twisty, windy Hollywood Hills super fast. The people in front of them are drunk, and... Um, Anyway, they ended up losing the drag queens. So they're like, oh, now we don't know how to get to the party. So they find, like, a phone booth back when that was still a thing. And, um, you know, little brother calls uh, somebody to, like, find out. I think maybe the drug dealer or something to find out, like, where the party's at. And uh, the answering machine picks up and it's just, like, nothing but, like, a woman screaming and, like, brutal, like, like brutal murder screaming. Like, wah, wah. And it's just like, boop. <laughs> He's like, hey, I'm trying to get a hold of you for the party, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, he's getting back into the car, and then, like, these three, like, really, like, raver-type people come up. And, like, they're, like, wearing, like, all silver, and um, they have, like, guns. And they have, like, uh, like Atari, like, the Atari video game. Like, they have, like, logos on their shirts and stuff. And uh, they're like, give us your car. So it's like, they're going to, like, you know, like, Grand Theft Auto him right there with his girlfriend in the car, like, on the side of the Hollywood Hills, and so, um, and he's like, but this is my mom's car, she'll kill me, and they're like, get out of the car now, like, you know, so, like, they get out of the car, and then, um, the driver's just like, tell your mom, I said, thanks for the bitchin' wheels, bitch, <laughs> and then they drive off and, like, kind of, like, do, like, a drive-by, and then, you know, little brother, I mean, Savari hit the ground, all these bullets are like flying at them and stuff <laughs> and so uh, we cut to uh, the Tari gang in the car and they're like driving and like there's like this crazy Marilyn Manson song playing and um, and uh, <laughs> they're all drinking and they're like one of the uh, there's like one of them driving and there's like another I think it's like two women and one guy and one of them's like turn it up and all the yeah okay so the woman 
who's driving, I think she's got like, she's drinking and she's like, turn it up. So they turn it up and she's like, turn it up, turn it up. And like, meanwhile, the guy in the back, he's just like, I'm full of hate. I want to kill. I'm full of hate. I want to kill. And he just keeps repeating that. They're like, louder. <laughs> and then like, uh, Dark and Lucifer and Mel and all of them like pass them on the road or whatever. We cut over to their car and they're all like getting drunk and driving uh, to over on their way to, I guess, Tutti Fruits party. So um, once we finally get to the party, it's exactly what you think it would be. It's like a hot topic paradise. <laughs> like everyone's like as like goth and partied out and raver and club kid as you would imagine. And um, and uh, sorry, I have a terrible allergy. So my nose keeps itching. Uh, I apologize. And um, so then we finally see who Juju Fruit is. The one of the drag queens like walks up to him like Juju Fruit, and he's just some guy with like one of those dumb like cat in the hat type hats you get at the fair back in the day or maybe you still can i don't know i haven't been to the fair in a long time it's not my thing and uh yeah so we see juju fruit and uh we did that's pretty much all we see of him and then like everyone throughout in the movie is kind of like intermingling all of this one party and so um you know we've got like uh girls who are like you know doing lines and then we've got like um the aliens like walking around the house like grabbing a beer out of the fridge like all casually um and then um you know again dark and mel like have like kind of a thing in the bathroom where they're like their relationship is still on the rocks because like he caught mel like making out with these two twin guys um <laughs> they're both and so he's just like i just wish we could like be in love and stuff and not like have sex with all these different people and she's like you know i'm not into that like i told you and he's just like i know so he's like moping around you know and um and then uh lucifer's you know out over getting beer and uh okay so then while all this party stuff's going on we have um the girl from the bubblegum dress and the Baywatch star from earlier and they're at his house or his apartment or whatever and watching tv and you know that she's like getting drunk and um he's definitely trying to get her drunk and um and he kind of turns on the tv and starts making out with her and then she's just kind of like pulls away after a certain point because i think he starts trying to like unzip her dress or something and she's like let's no stop like let's take it slow and then he like punches her or like slaps her and then like begins to start to rape her which is like it's actually a really scary scene and then you hear like the neighbor being like i heard some commotion like knocking and he's like holding her mouth like no there's nothing going on here so cut to um the cowboy's boyfriend who's hooked on heroin and he's like in his room well actually he, he shows up at home and his parents are played by the middle brady's um like the two kids from the original Brady Bunch, the middle ones, Jan and I think, was Bobby the middle one? I, uh, or was he the youngest one? Either way, it's the middle kids, like the real, like the actual people who played them. And those are his parents, and they're just like speaking in a German action, accent, saying something like, aren't you hungry? Or something like that, like we got food. And he's like, no, and goes into his room, and his room, like another big, like giant, like mural wallpaper thing, and it's just like has like, it looks like kind of like newspaper lettering and writing, but it's all just like, like really dark thoughts and like suicidal things. Like I no longer want to be here. I don't want to live and all this stuff. So he's like watching this in bed, like just totally like depressed and like coming down from whatever he's on. And he turns on the TV and there's this televangelist who's played by John Ritter, the great John Ritter. And, um, and uh, he's basically, John Ritter's on the TV basically being like, you know, you know, like, uh, Jesus is, is the way, like, you know, you're, there's no point in living without Jesus, send us your money, and at the bottom it says, like, 1-800-GO-JESUS, and the S's in the word Jesus are, like, dollar signs, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, um, anyway, bubblegum dress girl, Egg, she's, like, running through, like, traffic trying to get home after the rape takes place, and, um, it's, like, literal, like, LA, like, traffic where it's, like, just nothing but cars that are just sitting, on a freeway like not moving at all and she's like running around <laughs> and uh, everyone it's just like incessant honking so she gets home she cr crawls into her window because she doesn't want like her parents to see her and um and her dad is the is like the goofy guy from that show empty nest i can't remember his name in 
real life. But anyway, he's like, I should save you some shepherd's pie. And she's like, no, thanks. I'm good. And she's like crying, you know, and just kind of like taking it all in. And she turns on her TV and the televangelist is also on. So she's watching the same thing that the other guy is watching. So anyway, um, they're back to back at Juju Fruit's party. Time has passed. Some things have gone down. Um, I can't remember, like, every single thing that happens because this movie is just so, like, all over the place. But um, there's a phone call. Oh, well, actually, Cowboy makes a phone call to uh, his boyfriend's house. So Guillermo Diaz is calling one of the, the Brady's answer, <laughs> the Brady Bunch kids answer. And they're, like, uh, like screaming. And he's like, I can't understand you. I can't understand you. And they're just like, la, la, la. And so, like, we see, like, back where the Brady's are. And they're in the kitchen, and a cowboy's boyfriend has stuck his head in the oven, and he's dead. So, yeah, just, like, he's, like, halfway in the oven with his body hanging out, and the oven turned on. And so, um, then, um, <clears throat> the, uh, what is it? Okay, so, I think it's, uh, who is it? Okay, Scott Kahn, he plays a guy named Ducky, that's his name, and he calls home, uh, or no, he gets a phone call at the party, and Juju Fruit's like, hey, someone's calling for you, and so he gives him the phone, he's like, what's up, and the guy from Empty Nest is like, like, it's your sister, <laughs> and like, we cut to the house, and we see like, his sister's bedroom, and like, I don't know how she did this to herself, but the walls, and like, the bed, and everything is just like, completely splattered in blood, just like, cut up and splattered there's blood everywhere and like you can just see like um on from behind the bed you can see like her legs are just like sticking up or whatever like dead and i think those are even covered in blood too or something so i don't know if she was murdered or killed herself but if she killed herself which is what they're implying uh or at least i think they are but because of the the televangelist um <laughs> There's no possible way the blood could have been, like, all over the place like that. Like, that's some staircase shit. You've seen the, the, the staircase documentary. <laughs> it's like, there's just no way. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so Ducky, like, loses it and jumps into the pool and tries to drown himself. And then Christina Apple Applegate, like, who has a crush on Ducky because she chipped his tooth with her braces earlier. She's, like, eating a corn dog and sees this. And she's like, oh, my God, Ducky, with, like, a full <laughs> mouth, like, full of corn dog. She, like, jumps into the pool and, like, pulls him out or whatever. And, she, and uh, you know, like, basically is like, don't do that. And he's, like, freaking out, like, my sister. And um, so anyway, like, back inside inside the house, like, at the party, there, uh, um, the motorcycle guy runs into the drug dealer guy. And the motorcycle guy, like, loses his shit, and he's like, hey, remember me, the guy you sold bad drugs to? And he, like, starts, like, count, like, beating him up or whatever, and so the other guy, the drug dealer, starts fighting back, and, like, grabs, like, a butcher knife off the, the kitchen counter, and it's like, hey, you want to fight me, tough guy? Fight me! And so, like, the motorcycle guy, who's much bigger than him, like, takes this drug dealer down, and takes, like, um, everyone around the party is, like, watching now, like, no, stop, stop. I'm like, this is the part where they suddenly have morals, or, like, like we don't want that happening um and so uh the the drug the, the motorcycle guy picks up like a campbell's tomato soup can and starts like beating the drug dealer in the face with it until like i mean like it's graphic it's violent and like you can't tell which is blood and which is tomato sauce and it just keeps going on it keeps going on while they're trying to pull him off and um the motorcycle guy's just like he's got like this psychotic look on his face and he's covered in like tomato soup tomato soup and blood and like He's just, like, laughing hysterically at, like, the guy he just killed. And everyone else is like, oh, my God. And one of the guys who's been trying to pull him off is, is James Duvall, um, dark. And uh, he's just sitting there, like, horrified. So now we're, like, pretty much at the end of the movie. I skipped over some parts, but, again, I'm doing this from memory. So I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, so James Duvall's, like, in his bed, and he's, like, laying down and does, like, he records, like, a video diary of himself about, like, how, you know, like, L.A. is lost, um, there's nobody here for me, like, I, you know, like, it's, like, we're all doomed, the world's gonna end, um, and after he finishes his, his, his mopey diary, uh, Nathan Bexton crawls in, and he's, like, naked, crawls in through, uh, Dark's window, and, um, 
dark side here and like gives him like a pair of underwear and he's like what happened to you and he like takes off this little like some like i don't know alien thing like that's been attached to his head kind of like uh something you see at a hospital when they put like the little like pads with the wires or whatever connected to you i don't know what that shit's called i didn't go to medical school, medical school. <laughs> uh and so um so he crawls into bed with them or whatever and they both just talk about like their horrible day and dark's like so what happened and and nathan dexton who's I can't, montgomery he's like, at the end of the movie, I remember. His name is Montgomery. He's like, uh, I was kidnapped by space aliens. And he was like, and when I was up there, um, all I could think about was, what if I never see you again? And so then they like kind of kiss and have this like tender moment. And you think, oh, like they're going to wind up together and everything's going to end up happy, you know. Like finally, like Dark gets what he wants. Because Dark is kind of the protagonist of this movie, even though like it's a movie about like just character a bunch of crazy characters um and so like they both like uh they're like promise you'll never leave me and they're like yeah and so they're like cuddling and like laying in bed and they both kind of like drift off to sleep and then suddenly um montgomery starts coughing and then he starts like, coughing more violently so dark's like what's wrong and then the coughing just continues to escalate like more and more and more and he's like almost as if he's like gotta like cough something out of him or up and so like Dark screaming like Montgomery, 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 and then Montgomery like totally just like explodes and then turns into like a giant green alien like thing, like alien bug. It's different from the alien that we saw earlier, but yeah, it looks like some kind of like alien with like a bunch of arms, kind of like I don't even know how you would describe it. But anyway, he's sitting in bed like Dark is sitting in bed covered in blood next to this giant alien, and the alien is just like I'm out of here. And it, like, gets up and crawls out of the window and leaves. And then the movie ends with Dark just, like, sitting there, like, horrified, covered in, like, alien blood and, like, Nathan Dixon's blood. Like, and he doesn't say anything. And then um, the credits roll, and that's the end of the movie. And it plays, like, this really this sweet song by uh, The Duh, the band called The Duh. And it's like, love, love, love. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's a great movie. So if you ever get a chance to see this movie, uh, I would highly recommend it. And, um, yeah, you may have to go fishing for an old VHS copy. They might exist somewhere around the internet, but I don't know how much they would go for these days. I know there's, like, it's got a solid cult fan base. So, anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I enjoyed talking about this film. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. Um... Hopefully next time I do another one of these, I'll have my equipment back in order. In the meantime, I'm happy to just do this. This is fine. I don't care. And so I um, hope you're all having a good day slash night. And um, if you like my videos, you know, tell a friend, like, subscribe. You know how it works. Do all that cool stuff. And I'll be back soon with something. Um, and in the meantime, if you want to hear like more like movie stuff from me, I do have a podcast. And you can find that anywhere, like Apple Podcasts, iTunes, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, all that stuff. Um, and it's called The Secret Podcast of Laura Palmer, and it's a David Lynch podcast. And I basically talk with my best friend about uh, David Lynch movies in my regular voice. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check it out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.